Once upon a time, there was a group of dads who started playing D&D. This is their story. Hello and welcome back to D&D with Dads. It's uh, great for everybody to be here. Of course, uh, not everybody. Mikey couldn't be here tonight, but um, we are excited to pick up where we left off. It's been about a month. Um, so as a brief recap, the last episode was, was massive because it was basically a, it was a catch up episode. So, um, the entire group made it through the labyrinth world of, uh, dream world of the King who sleeps and chose to ascend. Um, you guys went through a final portal that brought you to what you believed was the flooded forest, but perhaps a different version of the flooded forest or perhaps a different point in time. Um, you had some interesting discoveries along the path to the mage's tower. Um, at some point you realized that you were going, you were coming to it from a different direction, not from the south as you had done in your normal worldly form coming from Tavalar, but this time coming from somewhere in the flooded forest heading south towards the tower. Um, you guys arrived at the tower and, and you did have a couple encounters, didn't you? We avoided a few too as well. Yes. Fire giant. Oh, who was that, that 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 old woman who helped us out? Yes. Um, Red some Cap. kind of evil dwarves too, Red Caps, right? Yes. Oh, right. Um, so some strange things assaulting you in, in your, or, or not just assaulting, but challenging you on your way to the Mage's Tower. Um, then you made it there. You realized that you needed a key. You guys had some lengthy discussions, um, at which point Tuco realized and remembered the, the key that you guys had acquired Watch. so, so long ago when you were um, doing a little bit of an investigating early on. In With your a dire bear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you and you discovered that that key left kind of in the crawl space below the uh, the cottage where there was an adventuring party who would once use that, that area, the Turning Key Adventuring Company. Um, this key ended up uh, by virtue of then Riff using uh, one of his gifts to to gaze into uh, the crystal ball, am I right? And and yeah. confirm that yeah the the key. the woman gave us a golden orb right oh, yes and um so it wasn't one of my gifts from the from the sleeping king but she well, gave I, us the I have the crystal ball. ball that's right um and and so with the knowledge that this key would be the correct key you guys overcame your fears of. Uh, total party kill and <laughs> put the key in and you were teleported immediately finding yourselves inside as you would come to, to believe inside of the tower um, in a small entrance room there is dim candlelight from sconces on the wall there is a door and adjacent to that door is a metal plaque and that's where we're going to pick up. So you guys are in this room. It's a 10 by 10 room. I would like to see what's on the plaque. Okay. There is an inscription on the plaque. It is in the language of Infernal. Okay. Um, this fits in well with, with what Riff wants to do. He's been watching, he's been studying Durant, especially particularly now that they found out that he's his half brother, and uh, particularly how Durant uses rituals um, and some of his spells. Riff, could Riff do that with comprehend languages? Perform that as a ritual, if you guys don't mind. I think it's like a ten-minute. Um, Wait, how long thing. does comprehend language last? Don't you already it lasts have for an hour. Oh, just an hour. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's man. A, have a on lengthy. It. Have yeah, a, it's a spell that lasts for for quite a while. Whether or not any like, of you guys know Infernal, um, Bill, is there any that. is there any reason for <laughs> myself or anybody to feel like we don't have ten minutes to to wait? You, you should. Well, first of all, does anyone just speak, or does anyone have Infernal? No. Negative Ghost Rider. Okay, so um, those of you with proficiency in Arcana 
Go ahead and make an Arcana check. Okie dokie. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Especially those of you who are spellcasters. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know. 25. Go, uh, same. Okay. Yes, so same. The, the two of you, the two of you are like looking at this and you're like, there is clearly some kind of magical connection between the metal plate and the the words in the language that you don't currently understand that are carved into this metal plate and the door. There's a connection. Um, so Magically I... speaking, it's your instinct that there's a connection. Further, because you had wallopingly massive successes, you are both aware of the functioning of the Comprehend Languages spell insofar as, and this is a meta tip for those of you who are DMing, uh, know your spells because the Comprehend Languages spells allows the literal meaning of any spoken language that you can hear to be understood. However, you also understand any written language that you see, but you must be touching the surface on which the words are written. So, for example, if you cast this book, uh, this spell, you could hear somebody speaking to you in a language that you don't understand. But you, would, if it was a book, for example, or in this case, a metal plaque on the wall, you would have to physically touch it. You have to like physically touch it for this spell. Yes. Wow. If it's if it's something written, so that's why I'm pointing that out to you because with your your high success in Arcana, both of you. Humphrey and Durant, you are aware of the functioning of this spell. It's, uh, what could possibly go wrong? You're aware really that right. you're aware that for for that spell to work on written material, he would have to be touching it as if he were reading Braille. <laughs> that was nice. When I see them going to try and touch it, I put up my hand and say, "Hey, let me check for traps real quick." Yeah, go Pretty ahead. Much. You can check for traps. I'm assuming Riff, you have not yet started the ritual, or, uh, or I meant to start it while they were doing their thing to help speed things up. Okay. That's okay. Um, Natural 20. Interim. What? Um, Plus what? You don't see... Uh, you don't see a trap. I don't like the look of your face right now. <laughs> you so... don't see... Well, I mean, it's not actually... Um... <laughs> Your body gets explodey. Let me let me rephrase that. <laughs> There's you nothing find, mechanical here. You find You're nothing right. mechanical that would lead you to believe that this was trapped. However, because you did examine it, I will give you some information. Uh, as I mentioned, this is carved into metal. And when someone carves something into metal and it is not machined, oftentimes in the carving of solid metal, there are sharp points or little burrs that stick out and and this plaque definitely has that watch your fingers when you touch it because you may get pricked or something there are sharp edges and be careful if you need to touch it so but riff's the only person who needs to touch it really well whoever's gonna if if that's the route you're going with now, if I any mean, of you had infernal as a language, you would just read it. Right. No. Riff is Riff is doing the ritual, and at the end, he's going to touch it. Does it look like there's anything carved underneath the infernal? Um. No. I, I will say because of your enormous level of of arcana, you you it's it's not so much in the physical elements that you're having your, your instinct is that there's a, a magical relation between the inscription and the door. Because there are no keyholes on this door. There isn't um, even a handle. Like it's... I, while we have this moment of like downtime, I'm going to swap the necklace for the lump of clay. Okay. For the purpose of attuning with it. Um, all right, so you're going to take a little time to do that, and uh, Riff, go ahead. You're you're in ritual mode for comprehend languages, right? Is that considered a short rest? It, it is now. I mean, if if Durant's going to do the attunement, so, so if we're just like wants here, to, 
If okay. anybody re recoups anything from a short rest, then feel free to recoup. So on that subject, I was going to ask you if, if uh, we are, or if we would even know that we're fully attuned with our with our magic items. Yeah. You you are insofar <laughs> as you have the, the the slots to to do so. That what? Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand that either. Yeah, that doesn't make a sentence. I'm okay. sure all those words how, individually, Bill. How? All right, sorry. How many things can you be attuned to? Is the question. So you have. Um, oh, I guess I meant in terms of fully understanding the items. Oh yes. Like you know what I mean? Like the, I know the bow does something, but if I attune more, does something else um, show itself? So some other effect or anything like that. I understand that we can only have what three attuned items at once. Right, right. That's what I meant. That's why I'm assuming that's why Durant had to switch. Wait, so we we already have three that we can attune to. I thought it was only two. You can attune to three things at oh, any right. time. At any okay. time, you guys can. Then, attune then I already then I already would have been attuned to the to the lump of clay. I I didn't realize that I was. So that's, okay. That's my mistake. Okay. Oh, that then it's my misunderstanding. I thought you had. A, um, more items and that's why you were gonna no so so then if, if you don't need to do that then it's not a full short rest unless you desire that to happen because the comprehend languages is a ritual and only takes 10 minutes for him to cast and i just want to say if possible i'd like to kind of keep that going <laughs> you know it just seems more useful if there's time if everyone yeah. knows that we're at a downtime keep performing it so i keep it fresh Okay. So the end goal. The end goal. If you do it enough times, you just you're on Mac. They can eventually know all the languages anyway. Humphrey. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yes. You the back. Do you have anything that uh, might be able to press that <clears throat> from afar? Well, I certainly have the ability to manipulate objects as if it was my own hand. Is that what you're suggesting? I think it can't hurt once it can be read, or maybe if we want to see if there's any harm that could befall our friend, my brother. Uh, to fair, okay, so meta moment here is, look, we all we know is we're in a room and there's a plaque on there that reads in a language that we don't know, and we sense that it's magical. Do we have any reason to think that touching it would do anything other than what, you know? bills kind of led on to um well not inherently like because in, in my if, mind here you, it's like oh this is a magical finger, thing. oh sorry go ahead if you were gonna go up to a finger and just you know touch the plaque like that to see if you get you know electrocuted or something weird but that's not normally what, what people do well let's say this at some point Tuco examined this. Now he probably had little picks, right? Like, you know, picks and stuff to kind of touch it and feel underneath the plaque yeah. or try to see if there's a seam. He did not get shocked or anything weird. Nothing happened when he was poking around and examining it. Does that satisfy your question? It, it, it does. And, and then languages is gonna be be like braille or something, right? Running your finger across it. Right. He will have to do that in order to understand because of the way the spell works, not this plaque because of the way comprehend language is worse. Right, so in, in my mind, I'm trying to think here is, I, I know it's magical, but I have no reason to think that like, the simple act of touching it would is going you? to be, would harm me, no, unless- You have no reason to believe that. So I'm, I'm more inclined, Humphrey, or I should say Humphrey is more inclined to, to just let it happen. Let him know that, it, yeah, th this is magical. There's some magic attached to this, but, I have no idea what it says or you know, Correct. freaking have at it. Yes. And, and I'm telling you that because you you and Durant both had a 25, mm -hmm. which is magnificently successful. Like you, you don't feel like uh, this is like just touching the plaque will somehow trigger a magical effect okay. in then, and of itself. Then I, I think I'm making a mountain out of a mole, mole here, here for the information that I have. Okay. So you, you guys are in the 10 by 10 room. Um, 
after 10 minutes, Riff, you have completed the ritual and you feel like your your knowledge is there now to understand languages. Very good. Uh, just thought I would attempt with Mage Hand just to see if I could read somehow connect with my Mage Hand. And, oh, and, uh, cheating. That is it. brilliant. <laughs> Let me see if that would work. Uh, but you must be touching the surface on which the words are written. No. You have to Mage Hand is not me. <laughs> yeah. You have to have a flesh contact with, right. with the... Uh, with it. So right. what I'm going to have you do as you reach out your hand to the panel to float your fingers across it. I'm assuming you're not doing this roughly, right? As Chuko pointed out, be careful. There's sharp. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm a musician, you know, so okay. take off my silk gloves. I'm and... not going to have you make a, <laughs> a, a deck save or anything like that, but you, you begin to feel across it and, and in your mind now, as your hand passes over it, you see the words. Your fingers are almost like a like a magical cipher. And you see the words suddenly turn from infernal to like a common tongue that you can understand. And it reveals what looks to you at first like a poem, but then you realize it is not a poem, it is a riddle, which I have pasted into the chat for all of no. you in pleasure. Hmm. Uh, and the riddle says this, there is something I seek while it is bound, it chooses kings and peasants. When it is freed, it foretells war or woe. While it is bound, it propels men's lusts and furies. When it is freed, it tumbles, falls, and fades. When it is bound, life will often thrive. When it is freed, death will often follow. What do I seek? Jesus. Well, and of course, Riff reads this in like his best like scary deep voice because it's infernal and he imagines something I seek, you know, something like that. Yes. Just to creep the guys out. <clears throat> it's a riddle, guys. And I'm sufficiently creeped. De meta moment, DM note, I just realized that I, sh you should have read that. As, as the play, I should have had you as the player read that. Because that could have gone in so many other fun ways. Yeah, it, it's that, your that first day, Bill. Don't worry about it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the next riddle, I promise, is all yours. Go ahead. All right. Let's think about this, guys. Who's good with riddles? <laughs> Not I, said the fly. <laughs> Something that I seek. What gets bound? <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, Durant's going to start playing this through his head, uh, and trying to figure out something. Okay. So it's, it's something that chooses lineages, right? Because we have kings and we have peasants. Those are typically passed through bloodlines. Mm. When it is freed, it foretells war. I don't know that I understand that one. It mentions bound <laughs> three times. Books are bound, but books aren't freed. No, Brett. Right, Durant? Oh. I mean, you know books better than anyone. Right. Um, are we taking freed too literally here? Terrible at these. I imagine right now that people at home are watching and they're they're screaming the answer. I'm yeah. the, sure they are. At the screen. They're, they're googling. Like, oh my god! How could these people be so dumb? They're both dumb hey, and ugly. What about, I, I just what about, don't understand. What about breath or something to do with breath, guys? I was well, thinking that, uh, but I if breath is bound. Doesn't act give life right? Life will thrive. The breathe on it. Out. Okay, so. But but when breath is free, death will often follow. I, I don't think that makes sense. I mean, assuming that you're kind of a jerk, that mm. might be true. Um, but I'm gonna say this. 
and this is also a meta instruction for those of you who are DMs. Um, you you shouldn't have situations or scenarios in a game that can be solved simply with a dice roll, right? So someone could say like, can I make a history check or an arcana check or a investigation check to figure out what this riddle is? You can make the check, but that should, it, well, successful check should only grant a hint and not necessarily the answer to the riddle. I like how clever the of bill it is right now to let us know that we can do such a check. Well, he's like, give us you, you, but, but here's the thing. But here's the thing. You already did. I've already given you hints. Oh, shit. Okay. So I want you to think about everything that's been described, everything that you learned before, before Riff even cast Comprehend Languages. There were hints. There are hints. We also have our presence from the King of Sleeps. If that would give us hints at all. Maybe, depending well, on how you use it. I mean, it can't hurt to breathe on it. When it is freed, it foretells war or woe. Going back to like, while it was bound, you know, the thing, the thing with bloodlines, right? Um, what can be freed in a way that might start a war, like maybe in an assassination? Hatred? I, I, I'm feeling like it's probably more simple than that, right? So, like, I, I mean, what if it's like just blood? Remove the blood lines from it. Oh, interesting. Oh. Bound. Blood is bound. Life will thrive. When it's free, it death will follow. Uh, what's the other one? Little falls and fades. Blood is bound to choose as kings and peasants. I don't know. Give it a shot. It's clever. All right. Um, I I'm going to speak to the plaque, I guess. And, and oh, wait. I don't know if I can do that. Bill said the plaque oh. is the words on there are sharp. So if you run your finger across it, oh. it make you bleed. I mean, sure, you could speak to the plaque. I don't think anybody's going to stop you from speaking to it. Well, an I mean, Durant's just, Durant's just going to walk up and do it because it's it's curiosity to him. He's going to, like, prick his finger on, on one of the sharp points and attempt to drip some blood on the... On the... What's the worst that could happen? Um, you do that. And <laughs> the, blood, does that. <laughs> the blood immediately soaks into the very solid metal. Like... It almost drinks the blood. Creepy. But whatever. Does anything happen when it when the blood goes in? No, it, it drinks the blood. But nothing else happens. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just... are, are the points arranged in a sequence along? Nope. So nothing happened. It, the plaque drinks the blood. the blood. Am I just the one who, only one who finds this funny? Okay. Just as an experiment, I want to take out some of my water from my canteen and pour it on those as well and see if it drinks the water. That's it, what I like just, to The water just drips off the... So blood is something. We need something else besides it. It, sounds it like. needs more blood, Durant. <laughs> how, many, right. how many times is it freed on here in this... Maybe we each have to touch it and um, give some of our blood. I think that's worth a shot. Maybe. Free, sure. free, let's free. all let's all do it. Looks like at least three oh. times. Estroff, is, Estroff goes up and and nudges Durant and says, "Pick me up, then. Let's get on with it." And he cuts the tip <laughs> of his finger. All right, I lift him. And he reaches up and he puts his his blood on, and sure enough, a second later, it just soaks it up. And he says, huh, well, that's me part. <laughs> All right, oh, Riff, yeah. Riff will do oh. the same with his, his non-strumming uh, hand on one of his fingers, um, and especially since he's half-blood with, uh, with Durant singing. Strength in their blood, their common blood, and he'll do the same. Touch it with okay. his left hand. You, you do. You drip some blood on there, it soaks it up. Pre-rolls his eyes, it does the same. You drip some blood on there? Mm -hmm. Okay, it soaks it up. Cut myself okay. my short sword and put it on. 
the end, the last one, the last phrase. You all do that. Okay. It soaks it up. <laughs> it's one thirsty ass slack. Does it matter? There's different phrases in the poem. Do we have to hit each one of those different phrases? Uh, do you try like dripping blood at its specific, like all the way down? Yeah, maybe cut your hand and then like rub it all the way down the whole thing. Okay, you do. I'm gonna say that you lose one hit point. That's it. You you smear you smear your bloody hand over the entire plaque. It stays there briefly and then it soaks it up. Riff, Riff speaks to the thing and says, "You seek blood." You just say that. <laughs> I guess. I mean, it says, what do I seek? Okay. You seek blood. You you see the plaque briefly glow red, but then go out. <sighs> what does that mean, guys? <clears throat> I say that the plaque, you seek water. Nothing happens. <gasps> I think the plaque demands a sacrifice. <laughs> how much blood do you, how much blood do you seek? <laughs> This is, the happened. black is just gonna just keep drinking any blood that we give it. I'm not quite sure that that's the the right direction we need to go with this. Um, Tuco, <laughs> do you want to burn that inspiration for a hint? Sure. Okay. Now someone else has something else they want to try. Oh, wow. I figure this is where we're going to die. We're going to die in the uh, mage tower in I this mean, one this, room. I, just, to, just to be clear, this is the first of 10 levels. <laughs> <laughs> we're so screwed. If you guys oh, live, you're going to be like 12th level by the time this is done. So, um, Tuco, you, you're... All right, so you burn your inspiration. It occurs to you as you guys are trying all these different things. You, you've tried, you know... Each one of you going up, dripping blood. You tried smearing the whole thing with blood. You you heard Riff answer it verbally, and you saw something happen when Riff said, "You seek blood," but then it was it was kind of a brief shimmer, and then it went out. And and as all these observations have occurred to you, Tuco, you think to yourself, when I pick a lock. Do I just go up there with one hand and one pick? Usually not. Most of the time you go up there with two hands and two picks working in conjunction to open the lock. And that's that thought, that problem solving process occurs to you as you're watching this. So maybe we need to put blood on it while someone is saying you seek blood. Or you seek this and put the blood on. Okay, Durant tries it, cuts his what? palm so he's bleeding. Yep. Walks up, tries to simultaneously say the words, you seek blood while putting blood on the plaque. Okay, minus off a point, a hit point. You do this, and this time, when you're doing it, as you say that while you're smearing the blood onto the plaque, the plaque glows red, like brightly red. You lose a hit point as it sucks the blood out of you while you say that. And then you hear a, a humming sound, like a low, like and, and you see the door vibrating and then the door slides down into yes. the floor and it opens. Nailed it. Well I, done. I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that uh, Tuco said that out loud. I, I don't I think yeah, yeah, I was planning on saying it out loud. Yeah, okay. Um, in front of you is a circular 20-foot diameter stairwell. So you're at the landing of this stone stairwell that goes up and down. The, the stairs are, you know, wide. I mean, it's 10, 10 feet to the center. So you could go up to, you know, shoulder to shoulder, two people uh, pretty easily. 
think we want to go up, but that seems too obvious. And, and by the way, there are sconces with candles in them. That's the, the light source. Okay, so there Is there are any the wind? No. Are the candles going in a certain direction or anything? No, you observe this and, and the candle, well, go ahead and make an investigation check. Nineteen. Yeah, you're like checking the candles, and you're like, "Hey, these candles don't even really flicker very much." And you're like, "When you blow on them, they don't flicker." And then you put your hand over them. There's no heat. Can they be taken off the wall? Do you try? Sure, I'll try one. Okay, you go to grab it. It disappears. Okay. It's an illusion. Does it stay away when he removes his hand or does it come back? It's gone. Now there's only one candle. Ha ha. Up or down? Neither, it's an illusion. Actually, can I touch the wall? Yes. It is very solid. So it does as as is the stone down. floor and the stone stairs that you have in front of you. Okay, fair enough. Can I throw a coin down the stairs? See if it goes down at all. Say that again. Can I throw a coin or something down the steps to see if it goes down? Oh, interesting. Um, yes. What kind of coin do you throw? Copper, silver, copper. gold, copper. All right, you, you toss a copper coin down and it's like ting, 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 ting. And you hear it go down the stairs. Um, and it terminates at some point below you. If you want, you can go look, but you, you get the sense by your hearing that it, it went down. Did I get a sense of how far down it went? Uh, good question. Maybe 15 to 20 feet. So I'm gonna go down 15 to 20 feet and see if I see it. Um, you do. You see, you go down uh, far enough around the spiral staircase to see the landing on the level below. And it also seems like this is where the, the staircase ends. And you see a door. And this door does have a keyhole and it does have a uh, iron handle. Okay. While I'm here, I'm gonna look for traps. Okay. Um, go ahead and make an investigation check. And my, I add my proficiency to that. Investigation. Just so investigation. you should you should have whatever your investigation is. If you have proficiency in it, it's oh, it, intelligent. Okay, so just a six. Just six. Okay, you don't see any traps. All right, so I'm gonna go back upstairs. Tell guys that there's a door down there at the next landing. Uh, doesn't seem to be any traps, but I want to go upstairs, up the stairs this time, and see if. It's the same thing up 15, 20 feet up. Uh, All right. So you go up, there is a landing and another door, and then the stairs continue up. Oh, so the stairs stopped at the, when I went down. Yeah. At the landing, and they keep going up. All right. Uh, check for traps on that that door. Okay, go ahead. Sixteen. Um, you don't see any traps there. Okay. So I'm gonna go down, meet up with the guys and say, there's another door up above. Doesn't seem to be trapped. 
didn't check to see if it was locked, but the stairs keep continue on going up from there. Uh, any um, any like ways to get in through the doors? Like, um, do do the doors have like bars on them? No, uh, the solid? doors that he's seen so far are plain, like thick wooden doors with banded iron straps. I mean, what do you think they keep in the basement? Imagine if you're looking for things, it might not be a bad place to go. Are we looking for things or are we looking for people? Well, at least we know down one level is the, the end of it. We could go investigate there and then go up from there. But if we go up, we, where do we start? Do we go all the way to the top and come back down? We're searching the whole thing. Right. I mean, I, I think we probably start at the bottom and work our way up. Sounds good. Any objections? Which of the doors seem friendlier? Did either of them seem like they wanted our blood or flesh or anything like that? Interestingly enough, both of the doors, the, the lower level one and the one up from, from the level that you're on, um, seemed almost identical no plaques or any other things outside. Both of them did have keyholes. So just for grins and giggles, I want to check the door to see if it's locked. Just because it our is. keyhole doesn't mean it's actually locked. All the right, downstairs locked. door is locked and the upstairs door is locked. Uh, so which door do we want to investigate is the question. I, I, I said we should go down. Yeah, let's go down, start there. We gotta have a place to start. Down works. Okay. Okay. So uh, when we get down there, I'm gonna going to uh, make an investigation check uh, to see if I can find anything that might give us a clue as to what key we're supposed to use. Like uh, I'm trying to find subtle clues. I'm just searching right now to see what I can find, essentially. Um, that is a uh, 24 natural 18. Um, while you're searching to determine what key to use. I'm trying to find th clues for what key you might. Yeah. Have. So, so have. you don't, while you're, while you're looking for clues, you, you see that the the keyhole itself is shaped very strangely. Um, it's it's shaped like a big circle, and in fact has a hole like that you could look through. It it doesn't have. It's dark beyond that, but like, it's not like a a metal circle with like a slot for a key. It's literally just a circle cut into the wooden door. Okay, I'm gonna to try to look through it. Okay, do you have any kind of means of seeing in the darkness? I don't. Do you want to utilize any sort of item which would provide you with illumination? Um, I have some candles, I'll, I'll use a candle. Okay, so are you lighting a candle, pushing it through the hole to see or? Essentially, kind of yeah, what, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to light the candle and I'm going to push it through to the other side. Okay. And then I'm going to look after I, after I hear it clank on the floor if it does. It As you do that, as you're doing that, it seems to you that you could see ever so briefly like the handle on the other side of this. Just slightly up, like kind of hanging down. There's like a metal handle. Okay, I'm going to mention that to Tuco. Actually, I'm going to mention that to the group. So, Tuco, do you have a means of seeing into the dark? No, I'm a human, so I don't even have... Okay. Brother, you so... can see in the dark, right? But does any of the magic users have a way to generate light on a coin or something that we could put through that? 
Yes, that would be called the light cantrip. Yes, I can see. I have dark vision. Uh, I can look through if you think it'll be useful. You can look through, and since we've maybe seen a handle, we might be able to open it from the other side. All right. I'm going to try. Uh, You try to reach your fingers in there, but it's kind of hard to do. However, you feel like with Mage Hand, you could probably do it. Now that you could see. <clears throat> yeah, I uh, would definitely like to try that with Mage Hand. Okay. You hear the clicking sound of the door um, being opened. And you feel like the door is op- openable. All right, I'll push it open. I'm, I'm right there. Okay. I'll push it. <clears throat> and uh, peek in. So you see a room. That is, um, I'll say that it's kind of like a, 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 a crescent shaped, okay? So it's it's half of a circle. You open the door and you're looking into half of a circle. And it's about a 30 foot radius from where you're at from the door across the entire room. And you see numerous sets of chains and manacles hanging as if at some point in time, this was a place where prisoners were kept. No other stairs or means of exit from here. Across the room, directly across from you guys, is a small door. It's about four feet tall. Like, it looks like the kind of door that was made for small people. Like, Estroff. Um, <laughs> and that door is just solid wood with a wood um, basic timber frame. Um, Who has the highest passive perception? Uh, Let's see. So any other light sources in this room yet that you guys are using? Did someone cast light cantrip to, to go into the to no. get into this room? No. Okay. Um, I mean, there's a candle on the floor, but that doesn't grant enough light to see all the way across to where where Riff is able to see. So this brings us to passive. Perception. I have a hooded lantern I could turn on. Okay. You begin firing up your hooded lantern, right? Yep. Um, You guys see suddenly from the corner furthest uh, from the center to your right, you see something underneath some pile of chains move. And then you see this thing float up. Uh, Those of you with Arcana make an Arcana check. Twenty-three. Okay, you see a a creature with green skin, kind of bumpy and spiky skin, float up, and it has no legs or arms. It's just a big ball with a big mouth and a big eye and these weird stalks, like pseudopods almost. And at the ends of the pseudopods are eyes. And it that levitates. sounds like something I want to avoid. It levitates up and it turns to you and in turn away in a language that you don't understand. Oh, no, actually, who speaks under common? Still have comprehend languages up. So it says in a language that Riff understands, it says, ah, what brings you here? Speak or I will destroy you. Uh, guys, uh, this thing wants to know why we're here, and if we don't answer, it says it's going to destroy us. I am Valatrax, the Beholder of Worlds. And it, it just, it's kind of like levitating, and like all of its eye stalks are kind of darting around, and it sort of levitates around the perimeter of the room until it gets to um, the door 
that's across from you guys, the small door, and it's kind of floating above that door because that door is only about four feet tall and the ceiling in here is like 10 feet. So it's kind of floating above that door and it says, none of you speak any tongues spoken by me. Therefore, I will speak to your minds. And telepathically, it speaks to each one of you and says, introduce yourself by name and state why you have come to the mage's tower. You're not the boss of me. Sashi, <laughs> I seek the mage on a mission from the king who sleeps. One of its pot, like eye stalks, like kind of nods, and then like it turns to um, Durant. Uh, you, by the way, uh, the people who made their arcana checks, you feel like this is an aberration, and you are familiar with certain aberrations that have uh, a similar appearance. Though none of you have encountered a beholder before, this one has introduced itself as a beholder. I suppose you want my name. Um, I am going to give it a false name. Okay. So this will probably be a deception check, which I'm terrible yes, at. Yes, please do. Um, I am going to say uh, Durant Maelstrom. Totally inventive there. Make so, that. Let's see here. Uh, that is a 16. It's eye stocks nod. <laughs> and then it says, Durant is your name. The other part is a lie. I see into your mind. Lie to me again and you will suffer a paralyzing ray. <laughs> And then it looks, and then it looks at Humphrey, and it says, "You wizard." In your mind, telepathically, it says, "What is your name, and what do you seek?" Oh boy, I say I am Humphrey Humblebottom, and and I seek treasure. You seek to steal the treasure from the mage who never dies. Ah! And the the orb is like Shit. fluctuating, and and it's it's eye stalks are whipping around like at each one of you, like kind of sighting you up. Uh, can I cast calm emotions? Is that a thing I can do? <laughs> My bad, guys. You should certainly try. Yes. <laughs> Look away! I don't think we want to be looking at this beholder. I am gonna cast calm emotions, and hopefully that brings the room temperature down a little. Okay. Everybody make a charisma saving throw. Oh, for fuck's sake. Good. I'm sorry in advance, everybody. <laughs> Let's see if this here apparition beholder can make it. Um, versus your spell save DC, which is what? Uh, spell save DC is 14. Uh, I failed my own check, by the way. All right. Uh, nine. <laughs> Got a nine. You see that the beholder's stalks sort of like calm down a little bit and it stops undulating back and forth in its levitating pattern. And it and it kind of seems it seems like your spell perhaps is, has had an impact on it. Humphrey, I don't know what you said to it, but you might want to apologize and state a different answer. It no, looks I, at I, this time it looks at at Estroff. And Estra, you you don't hear what it says because it's speaking telepathically to each one of you, and it it speaks to Estroff, and Estroff says, "I'm Estroff. I'm just here to finish what we started a long time ago to find out more information." And then it looks at Riff. Ah, uh, yes, I am Riff Maelstrom, and I am here uh, seeking seeking safe passage through the different. Locked doors with, for my friend Estoff here to help him find more information. 
And he bows to each of the eye stalks, because he's not sure which one he should be looking at. He says, information you seek, all of you, so be it. I will let you acquire the key. And you notice that its eye stalks look down at the door that it's floating above. And then it levitates back about 20 feet and it's just kind of watching you. Estroff, can you get to the, through that door? Estroff shrugs and he walks over to the door and he grabs the handle and pulls on it and he's like, it would appear to be locked. Ask the beholder, is there a key for this door? The beholder says, there is a key. And you said you were going to allow us to have the key? I said you can acquire the key. Ah. Uh, I guess uh, I'll make an investigation check where the eye stalks looked when they looked hmm. at Okay. You go ahead, make an investigation check. That is a stupid number, uh, 25. Man. Uh, it it seemed picture. it seemed to look at the handle. The handle which, of, the door. of the door, of the little door, which Astroff went up to and pulled on and said he couldn't get it open. Does the door handle turn? Do you try it? Sure, I'll walk over. Make a strength check. Oh god, I'm bad at that. Uh, that would be a zero. You're like, eh. You guys see Durant struggling with the door handle. I can go get give him I wanna, assistance. I want to watch and laugh. I want to help to go. Like assist Tuco because he's strong, right? Not really strong. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and uh, I'll let you guys try one more uh, attempt. Go ahead. Eleven on one roll. Do you say he get advantage because I'm assisting him, trying to do the same thing? Oh yeah, go ahead. Roll, roll a second okay. die. Nope. You're, Eleven. You're, you're twisting it and and Riff is trying to help you. And you hear, not mentally, but you hear the beholder say something again in undercommon. And he's like, they are failing. Perhaps a little punitive inspiration to help them. <laughs> And you don't know who he's talking to, but he, he says this. Guys, we might have some incoming right now. Heads up. Roll initiative. <laughs> God damn. Okay. 18. Holy moly, hold up. Ooh, that's, that is fiery good. 22. 22? I know, 18 plus 4. Okay, uh, Tuco has 18, Humphrey has 22. Riff, five. you have five? No. Yeah. I rolled a natty one, so I have three. <laughs> Holy shit. That's two natty ones in a row. I'm I'm cruising for another one of those games. Get him out of the way. All right, let's see what happens now. With the element of surprise, even at play, Humphrey is too swift. He, Humphrey... Your senses are when you, even though you don't understand what this beholder is saying, just by its tone in this language that it's speaking, you become very concerned that what it's saying is somehow negative in connotation. And as Riff provides you with his verbal warning, you're standing back. You see right by the small door, Riff and Tuco struggling with the handle Durant standing close by examining them 
and you and Estroff are kind of like 10 feet back, you see something weird happening. You see the door itself begin to move. And just as your friends are trying to turn that lock, the door itself starts to fold in on them in a painful looking way. Um, make an okay, arcana so, check. Okay. okay. What the fuck is, oh, here it is. 14. You, you feel like maybe that door is not a door. Like maybe it's a living thing that's a about mimic. To, like it's about to attack your friends. Oh god damn it. <laughs> okay. Um I am going to firebolt. Okay. Roll. It. <laughs> because fuck it, why not? Okay. Hold up. Okay. Here we go. Uh thirteen to hit. Uh, 13 does hit. What's your damage? <laughs> oh, haunt. Uh, 2d10. Come on, where the hell is it? Aha, uh -huh, okay. Five. Total? Yep. Okay, it attacks. Um, it is going to begin with a grapple. The grapple will be on. Not it. Shuko, uh, you need to make an athletics check. Athletics. 20. Oh, lucky. Um, this thing folds into you. You realize at this moment, like, as this is it in the. the the slow motion of combat as it's folding in to try to to grab you um, and riff that you're you're like oh, and you kind of like roll out out of its way break free from this thing that looked like a wooden door and door frame just a moment ago um, and you avoid it it then whips out like the door frame on the other side to smash at riff and attack him. Mm, that is a 17 to hit Riff. That's a hit. Okay, and that does 1d8 plus three, nine damage. And now it is Tuco's turn. I'm gonna say to everyone, I think the door is the key, and I'm going to try and grapple the door. Okay. Go ahead and make an athletics check versus its athletics check. Nine. You try to grapple this thing, and its, it's amorphous form makes it too difficult, to, and it, it simply kind of like squishes out of your grasp. This brings us to Estroff, who is going to invoke the power of Shalele with his bonus action and run up and hit the thing with the club. Missing. This brings us to Riff. Um, how many people are like in range of this thing? And is it the sort of creature that would so, get an attack of opportunity? You and Tuco are currently like in melee with it. Okay. Durant is five feet back from that. And then um, Astro, well, Astrop actually now is in melee too because he ran up to attack. Okay. Um, I want R Riff's going to uh, use Mantle of Inspiration to give um, eight temporary hit points to uh, himself, to Tuco, and to. Um, to Durant, I think I can only no, I can do four and and Estroff, and it also lets us move at our speed on the same turn without provoking attack of opportunity. Okay. And Riff's gonna hightail it like um, thirty feet across the way, and uh, actually, yeah, and actually, that's a bonus action because it's like Bardic Inspiration, but from the College of Glamour. Okay. And so, if if possible, um, 
I don't guess he had his bow ready, but at least get his bow ready. Um, I don't know if I can fire a shot on the same turn. You tell me. Um, yes, I will grant this. Okay, so it's probably not good. Seven plus uh, thirteen to hit. That does hit. Believe okay. it or not. I didn't believe it. Oh, the damage is just four. Four more. Okay. Um, this brings us to Durant to close out the round. You are currently 10 feet away. Uh, Sacred Flame. Okay. And that is a, what is that, a wisdom? I, I can't it's remember. It's a dex, dexterity saving throw. Dex save. Not the best, not the worst. Let's see how he does. And that's DC 14? 14. He exactly ties it. And guys, remember, you can move up to speed to get away from it if you want, yes. from that mantle of inspiration. And you have eight temporary hit points. I'm going to actually move closer to present myself as an extra target, though. Okay, well played. Bringing us to the top of the order with Humphrey. Uh, yes. So hold on. So so how far so away the is mimic, this thing? The mimic has Tuco and uh, Astroff in melee range right now. Uh, um, all I wanted to do was Riff, fireball. Riff used his mantle of inspiration and moved out. Right. Durant actually now moved up. So now there's three of your party members that are. I'm gonna melee. firebolt. Okay, go ahead. Nothing really, I, I can do here. Um, okay, so firebolt hit. Oh, hey, 20. Not uh, not natural. Okay, that's a hit. Roll damage. Okay. 2d10. Jesus Christ. Uh, hold on. If I, I, the zero is a, a 10? Yeah. Okay, then 11. Okay, nice. Um, the firebolt scorches it, and it, it shrieks in this otherworldly sort of way because you're not really sure where its mouth is, but it makes a, a strange sound uh, in addition to the sizzling of its flesh. Um, this brings us to the Mimic, who is going to now try to grapple. Um, Durant, you're going to make an opposed strength check. Oh, this ought to go well. Uh, that's athletic. <laughs> Yeah, still. Um, athletics is a minus one for me, so this will be fun. Uh, let's do it. Uh, ooh, that's not great. Uh, that's a two. Okay, it had a 21 because I rolled <laughs> very well. So it's going to attack you with advantage. And that attack will be a 24 to hit, which that I'm hits. sure hits despite your massive armor. Um, that's going to do eight. Uh, Tuco does a you 15 had, hit. You had eight to three hit points, Trent. Does it, does a, Tuco does a 15 hit? No. Okay. It, it swipes out at you, but misses. Um, this brings us then to Tuco. I'm going to try and get... Uh, see that Durant is now grappled. Yeah, I'm going to try and get him out. Uh, in what way are you doing this? you just um, trying to break the grapple? Can I see him? Can I, yeah, pull him out, yeah. break the grapple? Make a opposed athletics check. Nine plus 14. 13. Nope. Any other actions? Nope. Okay. Um, this brings us to Estroff, who is shillelaying again, this time hitting successfully for six damage with his magical wooden stick. Ah, it's adorable. All right, Riff, you're up. You have your bow. You are at range. Yep. Um, if you roll a one. 
there is a chance that you will hit one of your friends. I'm going to take that chance. <laughs> uh, 25. Yeah, that's a hit. What's the damage? Eight. Okay. Um, nice. Uh, Durant, you're up again. You are grappled. So if you want to uh, break free, you can uh, do that. So how does it have me grappled? Is it like wrapped around me or? Uh, half of it is basically has you in a bear hug. So your arms and, and like your, uh, you know. Okay. So, so your speed is zero. Um, you can't move. Um, yeah. Interesting. Um, I'm going to cast Sanctuary on myself. Oh. Well then, let's see how that would work. If he's grappled to you, does that somehow repel him? I don't think it'll repel him, but it'll make it harder for him to hit me. Creature within range against attack until the spell ends, and a creature who targets the worded creature with an attack or a harmful something is making wisdom save or failed save. You choose a new target or lose the attack. It doesn't protect the worded creature from area effects, such as the explosion of a fireball. Enemy creature, the spell ends. Okay, fair enough. That's a bonus action, and you can do that. So he, yeah, on his round, he will have to do that. All right, uh, this brings us to Humphrey. I firebolt. Let me know if you roll a one. Okie doke. 13. That's a hit. Okay. These things have incredibly poor uh, armor class. Clearly. Thirteen. Nice. You guys have done some significant damage thus far. I'm waiting okay. for the rest of you guys to pull your weight here. It is going to have to make a wisdom saving throw first. Which is Wait, why does it have to make a wisdom because Same. because it got sanctuaried. Oh. Uh, and it has a 12 total, which is not enough. So it loses that attack. It still has Durant grappled. Um, the other attack is going to be against Estroff. 19, and that's a hit. Estroff will take... Seven damage. Seven damage. And this brings us to Tuco. Guys, I think we need this for further on, so I'm going to try and grapple him again. Okay. Use a different dice this time. I don't know where it's... Two, six. His opposed check, a nat 20. <laughs> he, is, he is not letting go of Durant. Um... <laughs> All right, that brings us to Estroff, who's now angry in Shalele's. <laughs> Shalele! <laughs> Miss with an 11. Um, Riff, you're up. All right. Um, as Riff is firing, it's like, Tuco, I do not think this thing is a key. Can we just destroy it, please? <laughs> Fires another shot. Hopes it's not a one. It's a 13. That's a hit. Damage? Eight. Eight more brings us up to, oh, so close. And then we're at Durant. Would you I'm like gonna, to do anything? I am going to hold an action uh, to, um, on the next firebolt that hits, hopefully. <laughs> um, I'll just say on the next attack that hits, I'm also going to attack in tandem with my short sword. Okay. Um, that's fine. As long as you don't make attacks, the sanctuary will remain. Correct. Uh, okay. So, top of the order, back to Humphrey. Okay. <laughs> 23. That's a hit. Moment of truth. Oh, goddamn. Okay. 
can't. Stop rolling off the table. Seven total. Seven total. Ooh, it is it is singed. It's bubbling. It makes another one of those painful murmurs from within. Now, remember how I said I held my attack? Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna do that now. <laughs> And I rolled a nat 20. Oh! Shut up. <laughs> Jerk. All right. <laughs> well, it's only a d6, so it's not like it's crazy damage. Uh, that would actually be... Oh, it just Nobody can read it's... that. It just looks like a mage it's... tower. <laughs> it's a five for the, the die that I rolled. So and this is, this is one of the dwarven... Dwarven short sword. Okay. It, you uh, you basically like you shimmy enough of your yourself free and kind of just shank it and and the thing like screeches again and then it begins kind of like blobbing out into this amorphous blob form and falling off of you and and it by the time it deflates it sort of looks like a beached jellyfish like you can't see through it because it's not transparent but it, it basically just is like a blob on the floor now and it has this gray um, skin that is has many scorch marks um, the arrows that Riff shot are still sticking into it but they've like fallen to the floor because it's bleh. do I see anything else in the pile of muck um no, but with your extraordinarily large passive perception, you you see the right. beholder just like levitating and like kind of chuckling. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is there anything behind it where the door used to be? Nope. It's just wall. I'm gonna nope. put my sword check in there to see if there's any kind of key inside the the muck. You cut it open. Yep. All right, you find a key. Inside of the body of the mimic, you find a key. And it looks like this. Uh, but I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. I don't have that handy. It's it's similar to the keys that you guys have seen. Emotional roller coaster. <laughs> it, I'm going to say similar to, but not exactly the same as the keys that you guys have seen before. Yeah. It looks like crap. It doesn't look like that. One of these times I wish like a room would lead us to like Plinko on you know Price is Right. I'm like, can't it be that simple? <laughs> um I mean, this was pick up the key and tell the beholder, thank you for the key. It says in your mind, it says, do not thank me. There is your key. Yes. Uh, Number two. I'll add these in the chat for you guys, or, or I'll put them somewhere so you can examine them. Um, and, and, and the beholder is just like, be gone now, unless you wish to awaken the other sleepers. And you see its eye stalks. Look at each one of the bolts and chains and manacles that are in the walls. And then Let's it cackles. Up, it, it cackles. <laughs> they might awaken and be hungry. Up, up, up. Have a nice Climb day. The yes. Take the key and climbing. Yep. Bye. It it kind of like hovers behind you guys. And it, and but but it stops just short of you guys and then when you close the door, like you hear it do another like <laughs> behind the door. So the next level up, was there a door there? We had we had to go up to the next level. So you leave the basement level. Yep. You go up to the entrance level that you were on. And then, there was no other door there, right? Nope. That was okay. it. And then you go up to level two. Yep. There's a landing and another wooden door metal banding with a keyhole and this is another hole not like a key slot like just a hole can i look at the Wait. go ahead the picture of the two again the second key 
Was it round at all? No. Not even remotely. <laughs> I mean, might as well do the same thing we did last time, right? Get light through there and see if there is a um, latch on the other side. Try. I mean, it's pretty unlikely that it'll be the same solution, but it also can't hurt. All so right, yeah, that's I'm, key one. Go ahead, Eric. I'm going to do the same thing uh, where I light a candle and, and sort of push it through the hole so I can get a look at what's on the other side. Okay, so you, you light a candle and you're holding it and you're like, hey, wait a minute. You see something inside as you're as the candle's flickering. And you feel like if if you hold it at the right angle, you could read it because it looks like a it looks like um, a panel with writing on it. Uh, would a mirror help? It would. I have one. You you take your mirror out and you you kind of put it through the hole and you hold the candle so you could see. And now you see a slate like a chalkboard. And it has words written on it. Are, are they words that I understand? Let's see what language they're in. Um, Why did I ever pick half on this language that I speak? <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. Okay, this is in uh, one of the elemental languages. Do you have any of the elemental languages? Closest thing I have is celestial. Nope. I don't read it. I do have access to the tongue spell, but I don't know if that works for the language. Is the comprehend language still up? It is. Can't can't touch it though. Ah, that's right. Um if if you look through with your candle and your mirror, you could see that this handle doesn't hang down in the same way. Um, you, you see that there's on the inside of the door, there's like a, a, a metal strand that almost looks like if you pull down on it, it will, it will pull out something and unlatch something. Oh, that's, that's always good. Um, you're not sure if that's a means of opening the door or if it's a trap. Right. Always check for traps while we're waiting. Uh, uh, you did already. So unless Durant uh, explains to you what you have here. I, here. I'll, I'll explain to him what I'm seeing in the mirror in terms of the physical layout. Okay. So once you explain it and he looks at it while you're holding the candle in the mirror, you now you can make a check to disarm the trap. Okay. So this would be your uh, dexterity plus proficiency bonus. To use your thieves' tools. Four plus three is six. Eight plus seven. Fifteen. Okay. You actually you you get a couple longer um, like tweezer pinchers and stuff, and you kind of like grab one side, and then you have another tool that that hooks, and you you kind of bend it around and hook it around the wire and pull it down, and you hear a click and a door release, and you feel that the door is is can be pushed open now. So we go in, do we still see the, the writing on the other side? No. So when you when you open the door and you look on the other side, you kind of see you see like a rod installed on the on the back of the door, and the, the chalkboard, the slate is hanging from that. Almost like a uh, like a towel holder in a bathroom. Like there's like a rod installed to the back of the door that sticks out about four inches, and then you see this slate chalkboard hanging from it. 
Um, now, you could look at it at this point, you could take it off of the rod and you could look at the chalkboard. What's in the room though, the room is a, again, uh, 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 half of a circle, right? Um, same diameter, you know, 30 feet. And in the middle though, uh, across from the door that you guys are in, you see a, uh, like a, a very nice, like marble ring, like white, marble ring that goes like it's a it's about six feet um in diameter and it's like a like a fountain basically Is do you want to try and read the chalkboard just now now that we have it available yeah i mean at this point now that you can touch it Riff could actually run his hands across the chalk yeah. yeah i'll do that so as you run your hands across the chalkboard you are you're kind of smearing the chalk. So I'm going to read to you what you... Uh, hold on. I'll put, I'm going to put it into... So that's what you decipher from this language. So guys, it says, I'm sorry, I kind of smudged it, but it like, looks as it says, wash me and I won't be clean. Don't wash me and I'll be clean. What am I? Hmm. Um, again, about you know 20 feet away from you guys, opposite of the door that you are entering is where you see this marble ring that looks like it's there's a a, a a pool of water in there like a fountain except it's not spouting up water it's just very still water I, anybody Guys, could it be actually water? Because if you wash water, it won't be clean. But if you don't wash the water, oh, and I will be clean. I don't know, it's not it. So you guys haven't entered the room yet, right? I mean, you're uh, you haven't gone over by the fountain. I, I haven't gone over by the fountain. How about you guys? Durant is definitely curious about the fountain. Yep. Yeah, Durant's going to go and investigate the fountain. Okay. You know what? He's going to be smart about it, uh, and he's going to send Pierce to take a look at the fountain. Oh, look at you go. Remind me of Pierce's stats. Boy, you had to ask me that. I don't. I haven't looked at that in a long time. As long as there are no follow-up questions. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, am I just going off a standard hawk template? Okay. Uh, Pierce flies over there and then comes back to you and says, "Pool of water. Thing at bottom." Okay, so I'm going to tell him to... Shiny go. thing at bottom. I'm going to go into his eyes so I can see through his eyes, and I'm going to send him over again to take a look. Okay. This time, you see that there's a shiny silver key at the bottom of this pool of water. The pool of water is, is only about three feet deep. Is there any kind of movement in the pool of water? No, it's very still. I'd say don't put your hand in it, but maybe something that's not a hand that could pick something up. At least give us some more information. Um, okay, Durant's returning to his own senses at this point. Um, and I'm going to think for a second. Um, oh, yeah, you didn't tell us what that was. Sorry. Oh yeah, uh, I will tell you what that is. There's a silver key in the bottom of the pool. Remarkably similar to the other keys that you have seen. Okay. Uh, 
I'm going to do a history check to see if I know anything I don't know about the handwriting on the chalkboard. No, that's silly. Um, actually, you know what? I am going to look at the writing on the chalkboard and see if it's similar to any other hand that I've ever seen, like penmanship wise, as an investigation check. Oh, that's not good. That's a uh, 10 total. Yeah, you you feel like the rudimentary symbols are not like a developed language, but more like one of the elemental languages. It's it's all symbols. There's no alphabet. Okay. Uh, so do the symbols have meaning like in other contexts? Yeah, but you're without knowing that language you're, you're it's like if i gave you a tablet of sanskrit you'd have you do see some some repeated symbols right i guess i guess my my point was i was trying to see if there was a pattern there that wasn't specifically about the language that was there because i wouldn't know the specific language mm, not that you can recognize okay what are the elements maybe the one of the elements is the answer to the riddle Your idea of water wasn't terrible. All right, so none of you, other than other than when Durant flew over with his familiar, none of you have approached the the fountain yet, the pool. No, because we, we practically have PTSD. All right, Riff suggests. Uh, do, you, do you want me to come over and and try to mage hand? The silver key. I think that'll give us some more information whether we can get in there, get in the water or not. I have a feeling it's not going to be that easy, but at least it's something that's not going to cause people damage. Uh, does Durant know who would speak the elemental languages? Like, would, would he assume that elementals would speak that? Uh, he. I think you're fairly knowledge based enough to understand that there are primordial sort of languages um, that uh, I, I don't let me how do I say this without well, would, would I recognize would I recognize it as an elemental language first of all I think is, is the first part of the question uh, all right so you're you're a learned person you might not know the language, but you understand that for each one of the four major elements, there is a language. And, and that typically this is the language of elementals and the, the elemental planes associated. Uh, so you know that there is a language for earth, wind, fire, and water, right? So you know that there's Terran, Aquan, Orin, and Ignan, and that these elemental languages are how elementals communicate, but also other creatures that maybe are related to those elementals. I like fire. If you wash fire, it it's not clean because it doesn't. It's not there anymore. If you don't wash it, it's still there, so it's clean. Maybe. What about earth, dirt? If you wash dirt, it turns to mud and it won't be clean. Oh, but. Don't wash me and I'll be clean. I can't fit that the same way I couldn't fit yeah. like fire being clean. Well, well I mean, clean, we've I heard the that's... phrase cleansing fire before. Oh, yeah, that's true. Hmm. But I think we need to know more about the key, the water. Can we, <laughs> is it regular water? What happens when something touches it? Or maybe just throw something in it. Again, I can try mage hand it out of there if you guys think it's a good idea. If if you wanted to do that, you would need to go up to the rim yeah. of the pool to be able to see down because it's right. it's about three feet down at the center of the six foot pool. So it's not quite like you can't just like reach in with your hand like it's three sure. feet deep and three feet from the edge to the center 
Mage Hand is not like a f fishing reel, like from over yeah, here. You, no, you could use Mage Hand. That's that's easily within Mage Hand's reach. But I'm saying you visually need to see right. something in order to Mage Hand it. Yeah, I gotcha. I, I would also need to see it if I were to use like Tensor's floating disc to. The water is clear though, because the hawk could see the spine. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm going to walk over. Riff is going to walk over to it. and um... Okay, I need to know what everybody else is doing. Humphrey, what are you doing? Are you staying by the door? Yep. Okay, Tuco? I'm going to walk next to him. So next to no, oh, next to Riff? Yes, next to Riff. Okay, Riff. what do you have for a light source? Um, I have my... Uh... Lantern? Lantern, yes. Okay. Astroff is going to hang back with um, Humphrey simply because if uh, he dies while Mike's not here, I'm, I think Mike would cry. So, yes. um, and Durant, you are going to do what? Um, are you going up there with Riff? Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go up with him because if something's going to kill him, I'd rather not him be alone. Okay. You're among amongst Thanks, bro. Men. Well, we need some people back in case something comes from you know another direction. We have two people back. Okay. Okay. So the three of you walk up there. You see the still pool of water, and at the center and bottom of that pool, you see another silver key. And it looks like this. Oh, look. A short pause. There it is in the chat. Okay. Sorry, people at home, you'll just have to wait. So you see another silver key. And again, this, this silver, the, the key looks similar to the other keys. Um, and it's it seems to just be sitting there That's on the bottom exactly of the exactly what it looks like. <laughs> Did I just put a number in there to confuse you? Yeah, no, it, it, it's spot on, Bill. That's that that's exactly what it looks like. All right. So um that's what you see at the bottom of the pool. What do you do? Riff wants to look like straight up directly over the pool to make sure there's nothing that looks like up in the ceiling that would be like a reflection. There's That's... actually a beautiful mosaic painting of a god with lightning. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there's, there's nothing. <laughs> okay. I, I messed with you guys enough. I, it's just a plain, <laughs> dumb stone ceiling. Oh, I'll peep myself. Gelatinous cube from the ceiling. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, yeah, just very plain. <laughs> all right, um, all right, guys, here goes something. And uh, mage hand down. Godspeed, my friend. Towards the key, the you, apparent key. You feel the key, you start to bring it up, and that's when everybody needs to roll initiative. Da, 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 <laughs> da, da, da. Roll initiative, everybody. This is why we can't have nice things. This Natural is, 20. Fighting, and we're fighting a water elemental, of course. It, oh my it's God. really good, though, for you guys, because I rolled no. horribly for this thing. This All is... right. Um, Humphrey, what'd you get? Stand by. Hold on. A net 20? Oh, 20, no, uh, unnatural 20. Oh, I got the net 20. I got a 23. All right. Oh, 20, Rick, coming in. Um, all right. Durant? 14. Tuco? 7. Wow. Oh, I, I forgot to roll for Ostroff. I, I, I'm going to have him in a Come seat. on, Ostroff. Yeah, he's not shillelaying with this one. He'll be he'll be casting healing word from 60 feet away. Uh, that is a whopping four. For <laughs> when you roll a one. Um, all right, Riff. You're up first, and it makes sense. You're concentrating <laughs> on your mage hand. You see the key lifting up. It goes about a foot up into the water. And then the water explodes out. And you're all three of you that are there are splashed by water. And you see this shape of water 
just just pop up and then lash out towards you. Yeah, Riff is going to do another. This seems like a good time to do mantle of inspiration again and uh, get everyone away from this thing. Um, at no chance for it to attack with opportunity. Good idea, George. So <laughs> I'm going to do that and um, and then run back as far as I can and uh, I guess take a shot again like I did last time with the bow. Oh, I don't know what that's going to do against this thing. Interesting. And missed. Mantle of Inspiration is a bonus action. Yep. Then you're going to move. You get a free movement. Mm-hmm. And then you can attack. Yep. And what are you using as your weapon? Uh, I was going to use my bow. A Kiri's bow? Yeah, a Kiri's bow. And you draw an arrow from the quiver of no I, arrows? I go, yeah, I try to. Okay, the arrow appears, and okay. you fire. Roll. And then I miss. I had a two. Or oh. an eight. eight. Oh. Yeah, I know. Would have been kind of cool. All right, <laughs> Humphrey, um, you, your friend is now right by you. He did that weird magical thing that he's learned how to do and you feel inspired and everybody else seems to be inspired. I am very inspired. And and it was like one moment you saw the three of them. The next moment there was a splash of water. And before the water was even done fully soaking <laughs> all of them, Riff is right by your side with his bow out firing an arrow. Is there any way I cast fireball without it hitting, hitting any friendlies? Fireball would murder Durant and Tuco. I mean, how important are they? Just between um, you and me. I, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, no, we'll do Firebolt. This <laughs> is my cantrip, and honestly, it's a badass cantrip. All right, as, so you're going to do Firebolt. Okay, yeah, go ahead. might as well. Uh, I'll politely hang back behind a small boulder and, and fuck off. Okay, hold up. Um, oh, Jesus. Nine for hit. Phew, it actually misses the mark as this yeah. swirling water form uh, is moving around so quickly. This brings us to Durant. Believe it or not, I cannot believe how poorly I rolled for this thing. Wow, that is pretty bad. Guiding Bolt. I had, by the way, just to give you guys clarity on this, I gave this thing advantage on initiative. And I still, my highest roll oh, was an eight. Twice. Wow. Um, the bullshit so Durant, what this. are you what are you casting on this or doing to it? Uh, guiding bolt. Uh, how does this spell work? The spell. Guiding bolt five e. Ladies and gentlemen, guiding bolt is a flash of light that streaks toward a creature of your choice. Make a ranged spell attack against the target on a hit. It takes forty six radiant damage. Good lord! What? And the next attack roll made against it. Uh, has advantage thanks to the no dim 46 for or oh my god sorry i had a moment i had a, i had a moment i apologize <laughs> that's that's a that's um, a powerful thing and i'm actually gonna upcast that at third level so that adds two more d6s so now it is six d6 of damage uh no it's just one extra d6 so i see five <laughs> But uh, I still need to hit it with a ranged attack, so here we go. Here you go. Uh, that would be... Uh, that's a 16. That's a hit. Oh, wow. Okay, all right. Uh, all that fat damage. That's more D6s than I actually have out tonight. Uh, <laughs> so... Oh, wow. a good thing to have happen for anything but a DM. 13, 13 damage. 13, it does. The the blast of radiant uh, light that emits from your body, the light of the very light of Denier just whoosh, like fills this waterous form with light and it, it shimmers and like parts of it like spit off and, and like, like water shoots out from it as if you deeply damaged it. How much damage was that again? It was 13. Okay. Um, it's its turn. Oh boy. I'm sorry. I need to retcon something. Andy, 
Your mantle of inspiration grants that benefit to everyone who's your ally. It's... So, for example, Durant could have moved and done his attack. He yeah, could have I was... moved for free. Yes, right away, and then fired after. And Tuco could have done the same thing. Yes. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask each one of you, Dave, I'll start with you. Did you want to move back away from the thing when you received that inspiration from Riff, or did you want to stay up there with Durant? If I get a free move, yes, I'd move away. I was going to use my skirmisher to get away. All right, free move. So you move back towards Riff. Durant, you could still have cast your guiding bolt from a range, a significant range. Um, Did you want Uh, to use the mantle of inspiration to move back from the fountain? Yes. Okay. That'll be the last time I retcon any stupidity on your parts. Uh, The next time you will all suffer raging murder death from my monsters. So, (laughs) um, Take advantage and, of what, what you got. And, and don't forget the eight temporary hit points. Yeah. Is the other You'll bonus need the for that. Hit points. But not added to the previous hit points. It's just replacing. You have all moved away. Um, Durant, you definitely did damage to this thing. It now sinks back into the pool immediately. Ooh. Fireball. Which brings us to two go. I'm gonna say fire, get everyone get away, fireball the water. Everybody is away. All of <laughs> you are clustered back by the door. It is uh, 20 feet away from the end, from the door to the the edge of the pool. How can Tuco fireball? No, I'm yelling to you guys. We need to- No, I, I am 100% supportive of this action. I just wanted to clarify. I'm moving back as far as I can, that gets me out of the room so that I'm not in range of a fireball or anything. That's what I'm doing. Yes, full send, go, go, go. Estroff moves behind um, Humphrey and out into the hallway. That's his turn. Back to the top, it's Riff's turn. (laughs) Yeah, Riff goes where Estroff goes. He's like, why, wait, 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 why are you guys gonna shoot a fireball all of a sudden? Well, maybe we should get back to trying to figure out the the next riddle and see if that'll be more useful in the here. The riddle than, is fire. The answer than, to the riddle is fire, I think. Well, how about like a fire bolt? Maybe that's fire too, but it's not going to destroy us. <laughs> Potentially, I don't know. I, I'm not big on the fireball idea, but um, yeah, Riff backs up and uses his his action to to speak and. Um, okay. Humphrey. Ready in action. I mean, you don't have to ask me twice. Hold on. Are you fireballing or of fire course. Bolting? I mean, who's who's in range of the ball? Okay, so every all of your comrades have moved back. Right. So they're next to you. There's no one next to the pool, but the thing is also submerged back into the water. So how much damage can a fireball do? while they're in the water. It could destroy the key that's in there. Make a Humphrey and only Humphrey make an Arcana check. Golly. 21. 21? Mm -hmm. So you have some knowledge of the elemental planes. You know that, in theory, the elemental plane of water is literally all water. Like, if you just magically teleported there, you would drown, because it's just water. And it occurs to you that fire has to have something else to function, like air. That fire won't burn in a vacuum. Um, And you're not sure that fire will have any impact on a water or a elemental creature of water, which this appears to be. Yeah, kind of goes with what I thought. Okay. You're not sure if it will have an impact or as significant of an impact. Because you think about like what, what would happen if you cast fireball on a normal pool of water. 
Of course, the heat from the fireball would burn up some of the water. It would it turn into steam. Sure. But would it? Would it completely destroy the water? No. Likewise, what would a bucket of water do to a? What are my options for retreat? You you or have disengagement? Already, you have retreated. You're thirty feet, twenty feet away from the pool. I guess skip my turn. All right, you're going to hold your action. I All guess right. so. Durant, Sorry, you're guys. up. Durant's uh, going to go on a whim here, I think, and um, cast create water. Create water. Okay. And I'm going to dump more water on the water element. Okay, so uh, this is a spell with a range of 30 feet, so that works. Um, create or destroy water. You either create or destroy water. Create water, you create okay. 10 gallons of clean water within range in an open container. Alternatively, the water falls as rain in a 30-foot cube within range, extinguishing exposed flames in the area. Destroy water, you destroy up to 10 gallons of water in an open container within range. Alternatively, you destroy fog in a 30-foot cube within range. Interesting. All right. So you want to create water. Do you want that water to fill the pool? Yes, that's my idea. Okay. So you you create 10 gallons more of water. And you, you actually see the water level rise to the point where it's now kind of just at the lip of the marble ring. And, okay. And nothing happens it's it rises. Okay. i had to try it okay um tuco back to you what do you do you i'm gonna get my longbow out and ready oh my ready God. action okay you get your longbow out and you ready in action which brings us to Estroff, who also says, Ah, uh, what are we here for exactly again? The key, <laughs> you said? Hmm. hmm uh, interesting. Uh, okay. Hmm. What if I turned into a frog oh, and swam to the bottom of the pool, acquired the key in my mouth, and then jumped out while you distracted this watery creature. I said that Estroff said that all of that during combat. Yeah. So you guys are not, unless you're moving towards this or doing anything with the pool, you're basically not in initiative so much. So you're kind of in the room, the, the pool, nothing happens in the pool. The water creature doesn't do anything unless you move towards it. Okay. Or what if we do exactly what we did last time and Riff focuses on using Mage Hand to get the key while the rest of you suffer unimaginable pain and suffering from the attacks of this strange water elemental, but we get the key and then we escape. Yes, that thing. Sounds like a plan. Yep. I've got a pretty ready. good Armor class one for the team. Volunteer. I've Excellent. always been at the whim of rifts, I'll, whatever. I'll volunteer as well. I'll follow closely behind. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> Guys, I'm not. I'm not mage handing again. Estroff, what is it that makes you think it won't attack you if you're a little frog? Do you think it won't see you or notice you? Uh, no, it was just an idea. Originally, okay. I thought of perhaps a fish, but then there is the quandary of getting out of the pool with a key in my mouth as a fish. Yes. And also the fact that I am not a, a potent enough druid to have a swim speed, per se. Or am I? Because if you can swim as a fish, maybe I could, you know, if you get up to the surface, I can throw you out 
You and the key. Valid point. I... I am not sure if I could do that. You could throw him in as a fish, too. Equally do have, valid. Do we have any way to freeze this water? Hmm. I'm thinking no. <laughs> also, a brilliant idea. Nope. I have no way to do that. Hey, uh, Humphrey, why don't you talk to your your your? Does orb? anyone have Ray of Frost? No. No. Um. Ugh, gosh. Mage armor, sleep, unseen servants, dark vision, visibility, locate object, rope, rope trick, fireball, fly, clairvoyance, major image. I could make it think that it's frozen. Yes. Bill react in a way that's positive. <laughs> um, I don't know that you would know that that would work per se. I mean, if you what if I gave it? you twenty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 honestly looking at Estroff's druid spells in the hope that he has something, but um, meta, it's. The solution to acquiring the key. There are hints that are already at play. <laughs> Damn it. None of which you guys seem to have grasped. No, we're we're pretty stupid, Bill. I get it. Okay. <laughs> I guess I need to think about the problem again. <laughs> like the real problem. There's a key like... at the bottom of a pool of water. How if you how try to get why... the key out? This is like Harry Potter. I feel like generated. this is like the sixth book of Harry Potter. It, it is. There are some Harry Potter elements to it. I. Okay. I How wide is the pool? It's six feet, so it's three feet in diameter. Six God feet damn per, uh, sorry, Christ, guys. Feet radius. <laughs> three feet deep. Three feet deep. So. Estroff has access to uh, no, actually shape water. You, oh no. Uh, you can change the color of it. You can cause the water to form into simple shapes and animate it. You instantly move or otherwise change the flow of the water up to five feet in any direction. It doesn't have enough force to cause damage. You freeze Damn. the water provided that there are no creatures in it. Would like to change the color of the water, please. Yeah. <laughs> off and be like, it's time for this water. <laughs> Guys, what would happen if we? What would happen if we somehow broke the fountain and the water drained out of it? There'd be no water left in there for this thing to do anything with. Is there, is there a way we can drain the fountain? Does anybody drain like, the water? Does Does anybody have the ability to shape the stone? Uh no, Estroff doesn't. Durant, do you do you have more create destroy water? What about if we destroyed the water? I have you an figure you idea. figure there's a about. I have an interesting idea. Uh, so you said this is a water elemental. Um, is, is I did I say that or did I say that it was a creature? You, not. you said it was a that was based a on the element of water. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. You did not say that. Um. So, um, and the key is in the creature, or the key is in the water, in the bottom of the pool. It is in the bottom of the pool. So, is there anything else we could get the lot lure the water into a different um, container? Maybe it'll get into that. And notice it didn't follow us; it just went right back in the pool. And only when we tried to take the key out. So you feel like there's about 70 gallons of water in this pool because Google helped me with math. Yes. Uh, so, it, it, well, plus the extra 10 gallons that I added. Yeah. About 70 gallons. Um, of note, when, 
when Riff started to mage hand the key, it did work. Like he he had lifted the key up. But but I guess I guess my question is when when the creature of water moves, does the key stay behind in the pool or does the key move with it? Uh, that is not something that you saw. All right, I'm gonna get closer so I can see if that happens. Okay, it looks like it's on the bottom of the pool. Not exactly in the same spot. Like maybe it, it stirred when the creature came out. Is anybody up by the pool looking at it with Durant? It's, it's a creature, right? Tuco is. Could yeah. I use my channel divinity to read thoughts? Maybe. Sure. All right, I'll try it. On the creature in the water. Oh, uh, read thoughts five e. Detect Why thoughts. I bring up in Google. Um, you can read the thoughts of certain creatures and cast a spell. You focus on the mind of any creature. You choose a creature that has an intelligence of three or lower. The creature is unaffected. Well, this does have an intelligence. So you learn the surface thoughts. Okay. Wait for the password. Guard the key. Wait for the password. Guard the key. Wait for uh, the I'm password. I'm going to say out loud Guard. water. Okay. Oh, and you're still reading its thoughts? Yeah. It said the password. It said the password. Oh, it said the yes. password. Water. Water. It said the password. Water. And then once you you know, you see the pool start to swirl, but it doesn't explode upward. It starts to swirl. And you see, like, under the water, though still invisible, there's motion. And you see, like, the swirling motion pushes the key up. And when the key kind of floats to the surface, there's, like, a slap. I'm like, going to grab it. Maybe nice. the tail, and the key comes flying out towards you guys with a little spray of water. Sure, I'll, I'll let Tuco have the key. All right. It looks very much, very much like the other keys. Upon closer inspection, you weren't even, you're like, man, they're so similar. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be great once we find the locks they go to. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, can we take the keys out and examine them? In the room? Sure. Well, no, out in the, out in the yeah. stairwell. Okay. So in the in the chat, you've got the the, the pictures. We got a um, two. You guys take what what's that? We have a two and we have a three. Right. You used you used one to open up this this place. Mage Tower. Right. So we have two. I thought the two key was going to be for the second floor, which we're at, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Now we have a three key. Are there any visual differences in the keys? I mean, I'm looking at the pictures myself right now. I don't see a whole lot of difference here. Unless there's something subtle. Just the numbers, which could indicate the order to use them, or it could indicate which right. floor to so use it, we or something numbers. else. Are the numbers actually on the keys, or no? No. Um, these are just no. that's that's so you guys can keep them straight. Uh, I'm going to investigate the keys to see if I notice any specific differences about them. Like, are they made of different metals? Do they have different weights? Uh, that sort of stuff. Are they... Uh, say so that again? Uh, like, are they made they of have, different metals? Right. So no. They, okay, do they have different weights? Hmm... No, they seem to weigh the same. Okay. Uh, is there anything inscribed on them that's different? Um, 
One key to rule them all. Not and dragon fire. either of these two keys. And they, they basically look identical when I'm looking at them extremely closely. Like if I hold them up next to each other, there's no visual difference. Yes. Correct. I have to be very careful with this because I don't want to give away clues. I mean, detect magic is a waste because that'll just light up because everything's magic here. Yes. <laughs> um, Are there any other doors in, in this room? No. The stairwell continues up. Riff walks out of the door, dejected with his shoulders slumped for how disastrous and easy this room should have been, and asks Estra for a swig from his amazing bottle of unending wine. He's like, I am way ahead of you, my good friend. And hey, he hands it to you. Thank you. It is truly the most amazing <laughs> wine, isn't it? it it's how, how much wine does it take for uh, for Estroff to think he's a fish? Uh, it would take a bit more. Eh, I guess you're working on it, right? Yes. Yes, go up, up the steps. Yeah, can we get the room? I'd love to. Okay. This one um sorry, give me one second. Okay. Water. <laughs> Man. I was thinking all fifth element where we had to actually make it and all we had to do is say the word. As you get to the next level up, there's a, a, a smell that assaults your senses. It is a smell of rot. Like, it's, it's like a foul alley garbage smell mixed with sewers and also like rotting meat like sulfur or like much more complex no, like rotten that. garbage sewer uh outhouse a uh, hunk of beef left out in the sun in summertime yeah yeah like thank all you. of those smells you're very descriptive yeah to the point where like i'm not gonna make you make a con save to not vomit but you're on the verge of that Thank and you. that's you haven't even you get up to the level and that there's this smell. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Now the door, the doorway has no door in it. It's just an open doorway, the landing, the stairs continue up, but this landing is just an open doorway. And it it opens up into yet another semicircular room same dimensions but this room uh does anybody cast light or something into it or oh uh tuco you have your lantern so you could see that this room seems to be like literally some kind of garbage room because there are multiple pipes in the ceiling like there are three different pipes uh in the ceiling about 10 feet apart that seem to be like sewage pipes now they don't have anything actively coming out of them, but you could see that they're stained from being used. And there's detritus, just garbage, sewage, raw sewage, leftover food parts, all this stuff, piles of this in this room. You see a wooden table the only thing that's like standing in this room is a wooden table across the room. And on that wooden table is a piece of parchment that looks like it's propped up almost like in a frame that's on the table. 
and the piece of parchment has writing on it. Anybody else reminded of Moander? I'm not going to read poop runes, guys. <laughs> this is in, the in this is in the language of orc. It's in mm-hmm. orcish. Hey, but I studied anyone... orcish for a little bit. I never fully gained proficiency in it, but I might be able to pick out some words. Okay. Or was I actually goblin? I can't Make remember. an investigation check. Hang on. I need to remember if that was actually orcish. It might have been oh. goblin instead. Got it. Uh, I remember it was an early session. It was after we encountered the first set of orcs. I think, yeah, I did study orcish at the library, but I never got full, fully proficient in it. So I'm well, there to... is a way for you to read the parchment. If only you could traverse the mucky sewage to get to it, or if you had a spell that would allow you to grab the parchment, bring it to you physically, and then uh, touch it. If only such a spell existed. <laughs> if only one person didn't have both spells. <laughs> well, two people might have those spells. Do you um, want me to grab the parchment for you, Durant? Or I could shoot it with an arrow with a rope attached to it and bring oh, it over. Okay. <laughs> You know, Let's go with the I, non-destructive I, route. I think we've got enough destroying today. Okay, I'll go grab it with Mage Hand. Yes, okay. you, please. Thank you. This time it doesn't trigger anything. You float the, the scroll across the air to you. Um, Durant, you see this parchment it's with words on it written in Orcish. Uh, what percentage of words would I get? Should I roll for that? Uh, you get two words. Okay. Cutting and tool. Um, now, if I could still read it, guys. Yeah, if Riff wants if you want to, it. I'm not sure why we're um, making it harder than we need to. Yeah, Hand it over. Um, uh, all right, I got cutting and. Let me see what it really says. Cool. <laughs> All right, okay, here's so that's what it says. Here's what it says I'm white, perfect for cutting and grinding. For most animals, I am a useful tool. What am I? It's a tooth. It sounds like it. Sounds like teeth, tooth. I don't know if it's a specific one, but. Okay. Do we see any thing that looks like a tooth in the garbage in the room? Mm, Just past the table, you see something that looks like maybe it's bone, like it's white, Uh, like maybe the skull of some animal perhaps a larger sized animal of equine nature like a horse donkey a cow something large skulled like that and it seems to have teeth in it um as you kind of scan the room you you notice that there's other food like discarded food piles Does it uh, look all like of it's anything? rotten Okay, so nothing is recent, and it doesn't look like maybe it's been disturbed recently? By recent, it looks like maybe within the last week or so. Riff reaches out his hand at the thing that looks like a skull and says, You are a tooth. (laughs) Okay. Just in case it's as simple as saying, You are water. Okay. Anything happen? Nothing happens. Hmm. I'm glad. <laughs> Another stupid thing. I want to try and touch the paper to my tooth. When you do that, you hear something in your head. 
it says, come to the table and take the key. I'm going to walk towards the table and see if I can get the tea. key. Okay. This is considered difficult terrain. You are trudging through garbage and sewage. You get to the table. Yep. Um, make an investigation check. I'm going to use the other dice. You don't see a key immediately, so you kind of start stirring around. 13. 13. Uh, make an athletics check. You slip on something as you're searching. 23. You catch yourself and you're kind of like face down and you see the key. Like just amidst the trash. It's a silver key. I'm going to try and pick it up. Okay. You do. And then you, you hear a another kind of voice in your head that says, stay here. Stay here with me. Is it a trap? <laughs> I'm going to throw the key over to my the rest Roll of the party. Initiative. No, that's yeah. how I got married. No, it's, it's, it's a trap, man. Just abort. All right, I everybody stay. roll initiative. Oh, God damn it. Ooh. 17. That's good for you. Good for me. Uh, Humphrey has a 17. Riff, what do you have? A nat one. No. Oh. So four. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, Tuco, what do you have? 10. Okay. Uh, Durant? 16. Wow. Okay. Oh, right? I'm not good at this, but somehow I did it. <laughs> um, Estroff did not do well. He is down in Rift territory. Humphrey retreats. <laughs> <sighs> Humphrey, you see the garb, like you see, you see Tuco like pull the key out and he's like, you see him like turning around. And the second he turns around, a big chunk of the garbage just starts to envelop him. Yeah, this the is the whole garbage pile just jumps up and this is normal and, behavior in life. Um it's 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 like the splashing from the water of the pool, except this is sewage and garbage. I did, I'm trying to find a reason uh, an ability to, a time to use fireball, and I can't because everybody is near me. <laughs> and so if I use firebolt out of disdain and anger. Okay. <laughs> Proceed. Thirteen. That is not a hit. Of course it isn't. Uh, I, it, it cascades into the garbage and ignites some of the rotten material, but, but yes. it kind of fizzles off. Does Durant, that, ig ignite, it, that, that ignition form some sort of inferno? No. Um, Durant, you're up. All right. Um, I guess I'm going to blow my big spell here. Um, Shit. And uh, I'm going to cast Banishment on the garbage. Yes! Oh. Let's do this! Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! You attempt to send one creature that you can see within range to another place of existence. Yes! The target must succeed on a Charisma saving throw? Come on! What? No, it's it has my boy. a boy. Let's two. do this! <laughs> Oh man. All right, here we go. Minus two. I rolled a 16, minus two, 14. Oh, it saves. <laughs> oh, okay. Fixed. Is there something that happens even in a save? Doubtful. Classic. Hang on. Finding spell. Okay, so it is not banished. No. No, it is not banished. That is a badass spell, though, dude. <laughs> I, I was trying to find the right place, and I felt garbage could go somewhere else. 
Uh, it would have gone somewhere else. It would have gone to a demi-plane, which is good enough for it not to be there. Um, all right, this brings us to the creature. At the end of its turn, I have a reaction. Okay, well, it's going to try to grapple you. Uh, wow. <laughs> So that's pro uh, a 13. My AC is 20. Oh, okay. So nope. Uh, that fails. Is he done with his turn? That was that was two attacks. So um, if your AC is 20, that's a 13 and a 10. It misses you with both attacks. You realize that there's an actual creature underneath all this garbage. Uh, and it is a bit frightening because it looks kind of like, it's it's almost as if it has sort of the like the torso of an elephant, but an enormous open maw, maw jaw um, with massive quantities of teeth, just razor sharp teeth. And then it has these pseudopod kind of tentacles that also have grasping teeth sort of things on them. Um, that is what you were facing right now. It is very big and very scary. So as a reaction, I'm going to use my skirmisher feet. Yes. I haven't I've used it before, but it says you can move up to half your speed as a reaction when an enemy ends its turn within five feet of you without provoking opportunity attacks. So I'm going to, you said it's so, difficult terrain, so I guess it's quartered. So 15, 7 feet, I'll move away. That's fine. You Basically, you're able to disengage for free, which is huge. Um, now, it's your turn. You still have your regular movement, your bonus action. I'm going to use um, movement. Is it my bonus action? Do I get to... Can I go? If you action? use your movement, that will get you out of the muck. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm your full, your, full I need to. your regular movement would be 30, right? Okay. But in this case, your, or what, what is your movement? 30. Okay. So yeah. So you, so that would be 15 in the difficult terrain. So that's enough to get you out. So seven and 15 is 22. So you get back to kind of the clearing where everybody else is. Okay. Um, I turn to everyone and say, let's go up to the next floor. We got what yep. we need. Yeah, you have the key. So I'm going to start running up the steps. Next action movement. Okay. Go, go, go. Uh, Riff and Estroff are who remain. This thing is moving towards you guys. And remember, there's no door. This is an open portal. It's, it's lumbering towards you. Riff, you are smart enough to realize that this thing will not fit through that door. But it does have tentacles that have reach. And everybody who is still in this vicinity next round will be within reach. All right. So Riff first for Estroff? Yes. OK. So Riff uh, uses his movement to go towards the door and get to the door in case he needs to get out. and. Um, uses vicious mockery on this thing and says like you are literal trash like walking garbage how do you live with yourself okay to insult it it does speak a language um what is the save 15 uh, wisdom saving it throw. fails because it has a minus two uh nice. oh it's wisdom it's a wisdom. It does not fail. Sorry, I thought it was charisma for some reason. It succeeds. All right. It is angrily lumbering towards all of you. Uh, Astroff takes a cue from you and runs up the stairs. <coughs> Humphrey, top of the order. This thing is lumbering towards you guys. Tuco already ran out. Astroff already ran out and is running up the stairs. Yeah, I mean, fireball. Oh, sorry, firebolt. So there are no allies near this thing anymore 
So oh, if yeah, you, wanted, oh, let's if do you this. wanted to conduct yeah. your dream of the fire. <laughs> oh, Bill, you know me so well. <laughs> let's, let's do this. I have no qualms about that. Right, Just do okay. it. Let's, Burn the garbage. Let's let's do this. Um, now this is a twenty-foot radius sphere. Of course, it so is. You're, you're actually going to center your fireball on the back wall and have it blow towards this thing. Because otherwise, you would burn yourself up. No, of course. I mean, it'll not be ridiculous. Um, so it's going to make a deck save. You're going to roll eight d six. Of course, I'm going to roll eight d six. Okay. Um, I have to roll the I hit, don't I? Save. Wait, uh, hold on. I have to roll the hit. No, no, you don't. Of course. I have to roll the deck save. It it hits. It's just a matter of whether or not this thing's. It, and I roll the two, so. It, it's going to take the full damage. Yeah, 27. Um, okay. It, not only does this thing get scorched and it's, it shrieks from its gaping teeth maw, but a bunch of the garbage gets combusted and it blows out towards you and the smell <laughs> oh. is just hot air rot blowing <laughs> up towards the rest of you. Clean the room. I'm imagining this like pile of garbage just igniting and, and some blowing. Of the, some of the garbage was flammable. So there's like, like you know, you know when like you have like okay, okay, like you have your 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 like, can of garbage right of your of your trash, and then you're like you're trying to like close and cinch it up to tie it off into like a, a knot so you bring it to the the garbage can outside, but you get that puff of air. Yes. That like blows in your face. Yes. I'm like, oh yeah. Sorry. I, I I'm imagining how disgusting and gross this is. It is absolutely the embodiment of disgusting and gross for you. Well, Humphrey, if you want a third career, janitorial <laughs> service seems to be up your alley. Hard pass, but thank you for the offer. I, I much appreciate it. <laughs> so bell cast, are you staying or moving? I'm moving back. Okay. You go out into the hallway. Yeah. And, um, you are done, which now brings us to Durant. Uh, while I'm backing up, um, is this room completely dark when there isn't a fireball in it? Um, yes. Is it safe to say that this creature enjoys darkness and does not enjoy the light? Would um, I have the not? Would I have the? I'll let you make an Arcana check to see if okay. you're familiar with what this thing is. Okay. Uh, that's uh, 13. It's an aberration, but not necessarily undead or uh, abyssal. Okay. You, you you aren't sure if it's sensitive to light. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and sacred flame it then. Okay. It needs to make a save. Dexterity, 14. Which, I'm sorry to say it does. I rolled a 19. It has no bonus to dex. Okay, it's a cantrip, so it doesn't do anything. All right, uh, this brings us to it. It lumbers forward, swiping out with its tendril uh, tentacle things, its spiky teethed tentacles. How rude. It is quite rude. <laughs> um, all right. The first one is plus six. So that's a 19 against Riff. Is that a hit? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, how fast does that thing move? I thought we were running out of the room like at full 30 feet. Did it? But its tentacles are long. So it can you go up the stairs or just out into the landing? If you just like to its landing. Okay. So it it can move 30 feet. Right. And, okay. and it and it's it, it can reach out the door. It yeah, physically gotcha. won't be able to go out the door though. You you can okay. see that. Yeah, I got that's a hit easily. Okay. Um you're going to take please don't grapple me. Well, that's that's the, that's the next roll. <laughs> um, so you will be grappled, but before you're grappled, you're going to take 11 damage. 
And then you need to make a contested athletics check. DC 13. That's not too bad. That's 14. Okay. You escape the restraint. The teeth kind of shred you as you're pulling your way out. So it's ouchy. Um, Durant. A 13 and a 19 to hit. Neither. Neither hit because you are a tank. Well, let's just say they do hit but they're scratching and slapping up against your magnificent suit of dwarven forged uh that's right tank armor and uh it 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 lacks the ability to get a grip on you um like a slippery canister of damascus air gel. yeah i don't know <laughs> air gel <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. You're doing great, Bill. Keep it up. It, it tries to do a <laughs> slam. For the, for the third attack, it's going to try to do just a straight up slam. So, and that, uh, oh, wait, no, 23. Air gel. What, what was it? 23? <laughs> yeah, that'll hit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> make a DC 14 con save. Okay. First time in this die. Don't fail me. Uh, that's a natural 15. Okay. So that's enough. So you're only going to take half of the slam dam. Slam dam is a measly 11, so rounding down to five. So take five. Okay. Slam dam. Uh, Tuco. Well, you're up the stairs, but you hear that this thing is still rumbling around. Finish him. Estroff is already at the the next landing up, uncorking his flask, and he's like muttering to himself, "Like I I don't know how much more I can take. (laughs) I don't drink alcohol, but save me some." (laughs) Right. And then I'm gonna yell down to the guys, "Come on, come on!" And that's all I'm gonna do. Okay, Riff, you're up. Uh. Am I the the closest to the thing in the door? Is everyone else past me? Well, Durant's holding it down with as a tank. Oh, right. Okay. I was going to say, otherwise I'd slam the door and run out, but otherwise I'm just going to run out. Yeah, there's no door. It's just an open portal. So oh, right, right. You can run up. Okay. Well, okay. I'm going to fire at it because I can shoot and then run, right? Yes. I'm going to shoot with the bow. You can move and shoot and then move. 22. Yep. That Five. sweet magical arrow that appeared in your hands. That's right. Just Five. plunks into it and it, it screeches. All right. Um, I go, ha ha, and then I run up the stairs. Top of the order, Humphrey, you're up the stairs. Uh, Durant, hey, you. you're up. Do you choose to now leave and go up the stairs? Yeah. Jeez. Oh, All right. You do I mean, that. I'm going to follow Humphrey's lead. If Humphrey well, is going to you, fireball it again, I'll. I'll... It, it's okay. it's up to you guys. You can stay and fight it. But why? Land, but hum- or you can hum- just go up the stairs because neither one of you are grappled. Humphrey is 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 really like. I don't know. He. I'm trying to. I'm trying to RP him better. And Humphrey is like, why put more effort into it than it's worth? Okay, if you're backing up, I'm backing up. I'm yeah, just, Humphrey's like, why, I'm just giving why the you fuck? Cover. Yeah, Humphrey's backing okay. off. Why bother? You guys go up the stairs. Its its tendrils are whipping around, desperately trying to grab you because it can't fit through the door. And yeah. you get to the top of the next level, and you're at the landing, um, and it smells significantly better. <laughs> um, and, and, and you could hear it still kind of like whipping around. Right. Um, it cannot see you anymore, right? So, oh, Chuko, you hear messages in your head still. Okay. What? And it's like, please come back. Just come back. <laughs> Stay with me. 
It's very lonely. <laughs> Stay with oh, me. God. No, it sounds very trustworthy, Juco. It's, it's whispering this. sweet nothings. Yeah. Stay with I can't me. imagine what could go wrong with this, you know? <laughs> Well, once we gather up again, I say, well, we've got three keys now. I don't think one person should have all of them, so I want to hand out the keys to other people. Wow. Are you magnanimous? Um, well, allow, me, allow me to show you the key that you find. Okay. I'm very interested in what this looks like. This one might be, you know... I. <laughs> You should probably pay very close attention. No, yeah, I can imagine it'd be very different from all the other it's, other keys that it have is been possible shown. that you might notice something special about this one. This is gonna be very, very interesting. To be sure. Covered in poop. Right. <laughs> okay. Hmm. If this will just work. There we go. There it is. You look at the key. Did not see that coming. Oh my God. It has a a, a cool fleur-de-lis at the top. It does. A, a long stem. Just so much by, different than all the other keys that have been presented followed by to a us. Yes, followed by a rectangular tumbler. Yes. You marvel at the silver key and how similar it is. The craftsmanship. All the other keys that you've found so far. You it's, know, I understand why those key masters have been so well paid. Billy, you need to edit different types of keys after this, after the fact, just to mess with the... <laughs> um... <laughs> okay you get to this landing there is a bearskin rug on the landing and a humble not banded but just a humble wooden door with a handle but no keyhole uh, I'm gonna look at the bearskin rug uh, make an investigation check Uh, that would be a 23. Bearskin rug looks like it is old. Um, it looks like it's probably been here for quite some time. The fur is very matted and kind of patchy in some parts. Um, and it's kind of dusty. Could it function as a blanket? Probably. Um, while you're looking under it, um, you notice, uh, let's see, what would this be? Survival. Make a survival check. Oh, wow. this is fun. I'm not so great. I'm a terrible. So, let's see. Uh, 16. So when somebody skins an animal to for the purpose of utilizing and its its skin, um, there's a process that's involved in in like scraping it so that it's not gross, and then you know curing it and, and all that sort of thing. This does not look scraped or, or cured. It looks like it was like gross. carved off of a bear and then just like thrown here. Like not recently, but you know what I mean. Like you still see like fat and sinewy stuff. And, it, and it's it's not, not a very professional well done. operation. Yeah, it is not very well done. And, and so I've I've actually lifted it then to look underneath. Yes. Okay. There's nothing underneath, but again, the door is just a simple wooden door with a handle and no keyhole for a lock. Well, Tuco, I think you need to do your thing. All right, I'll check for traps. Okay, please do. Make your investigation check. 14. There's a small gap underneath the door and you actually see flickering, like candlelight, torchlight, something like that. Um, you do not see any wires or any sort of things that would indicate a trap. 
Looks clean, but there's fire on the other side. Make perception check. Nineteen. You hear someone snoring inside. Like something sleeping. I don't think we want to wake it up. Does the door did you say there was a handle on it? There's a handle, but it's it's unlocked. It's not locked. It's literally just a, a, a normal doorknob. I can try and sneakily open it up. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna motion a hand first, and I'm gonna say to Esteroff, Esteroff, don't do you have that that thing you know that that makes us less noticeable? Pass without trace? That's what I'm thinking. That was like the best spell ever. Or do you want to turn into a critter and go under there and see what you see? Estroff's like, um, sure. Which one? <laughs> I'll I can I can go spy something. And he, he turns into a small spider and crawls underneath the, the little crack. And he's gone for a moment. And then a couple more moments. And then he comes back. And he says, um, It's like a, a, a humble cottage. There's a small dining table and a, a, a fireplace with, with a, a, a kitchen and some pots and pans and um, a stack of wood and there's a nice fire burning in the fireplace and there's a, a candle on the table and some shelves with food and 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 a bed That's nice. I didn't see anyone in there though I'm not sure exactly what's making that snoring noise did you see a key anywhere you see any paper anywhere written writing stuff no <sighs> there were a few bottles on top of the shelf that looked like they might have had liquid in them i'm not sure if it was wine or ale your wine's probably better than that wine anyways well of course it is but Variety is the spice of life. So, what do you think? Astroff waits patiently for you guys to make a decision. <laughs> what do you guys think? So far, there's been a key in every room that we've gone in. Right. Sounds like there might be something hidden in there. That's my visible. guess. Sounds like some kind of illusion. Possibly. Can anyone like dispel things? <sighs> Hope we had a cleric. <laughs> if only that cleric had prepared dispel magic. <laughs> well, that cleric could say that it would dispel magic on the next full rest. But then we'd have to rest on the stairs because we sure as hell can't go downstairs. Uh. As you guys are talking about this, you hear the snoring stop. Oh, shit. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Too late. We're all dead. I, I was just going to say that I would cast clairvoyance into the room. Because I do have that. You hear a voice from inside of the room say, Who's there? Who is outside of my door? Help. All right, Durant can't resist someone saying help. He's going to open the door. I'm going to draw my swords. Um, 
Okay. I mean, cautiously open the door, but still open the door. Um. You open the door. You see pretty much what Estroff described to you guys. Um, the only the only slight difference uh, is that you see a man sitting in the bed, like sitting up in the bed, the covers okay. over him, and he looks very frail, like a human man who is maybe in his seventies, okay. like, and he's he's got you know he's kind of bald. So imagine like Mick Fleetwood from Fleetwood Mac. Of course, like, that that would be your analogy. Now. So he's like bald with like long stringy hair and like a beard and it's all white and he's very thin and kind of fair skinned and, and sort of sickly looking. Nailed it. What's your and problem? He, you see, he looks out and he says, Oh, thank the God. Thank the God. I knew that someday some would come and, and find me and, and, and assist. Someone would come to help me. Right? How long has it been since he trapped me here? Ages. Well, how about you start with a name? He seems to strain. He says, I cannot remember my name. It has been such a long time. Who trapped you here? Altir, Altir Geist, that is my name, Altir Geist. Yes, yes. The mage, he tricked me into waiting here. He said that I had to deliver a message. And he, you see, he reaches over to this very simple, shoddy wooden nightstand, and he, he shuffles around. He opens a drawer, and like the wood on wood action of this drawer opening makes a, a like a creak that's how like dry and old it is and he opens it up and he shuffles through some papers and he says yes here it is and and he you see that he's holding this piece of paper and he says i cannot read it i i i don't remember how to read <laughs> he says uh, What shall I do? He says, can one of you read? My These words, they make no reading. sense to me. And he, he hands you the piece of paper, whoever takes it. I'll, I'll take the piece of paper. All right. Um, it is written in an old human tongue. Um, and this was this was the old version of Sembian, like Imperial Sembian. It would be the equivalent of like handing you something in like Latin right now. Um, you are familiar with it as a studied person, as a learned man. You can decipher its meaning. Okay, I'll, I'll attempt to read it. It seems to be some sort of strange message. Okay. I think I got it. I eat 
I live, I breathe, I live, I drink, I die, what am I? Fire. When you when you Fire. say that out loud, the old man like he he like shudders and he's like oh, uh, uh, and he's like oh thank you for finally releasing me. And he falls back in the bed. Man, I should cast spare the dying. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, is there a charger for this? As you are saying this, you see a spirit emerge from the man. The spirit does not look like the man. The spirit, the spirit kind of looks uh, like a skeletal sort of monster. And it turns and it looks at all of you. Everyone make a DC 13 wisdom save. Uh, Bill, if that is your real name. <laughs> 16. Holy crap! My my uh, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Okay, twelve. You are frightened. I am frightened. The frightened effect will. I have peed myself as it follows. Frightened five e means that you have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of your fear is within line of sight, you cannot willingly move closer to the source of this fear. But do I pee myself? You, I'll say that you you hold it together. Because okay. You are, you are okay a medium-powered wizard. You know, if it, it sounds fair. It's a fair assessment. Um, oh, I, I, need, I need someone to roll for Astroff because if you roll horribly, I don't want him to blame me. <laughs> We're going to blame you uh, anyway. That's a natural 14. Okay, he's fine. <laughs> it's it's pretty painful if you fail by five or more. He's been drinking a lot too. Yeah, he's like, ah, I'm pretty sure that that's a ghost. And you see the the skeletal ghost thing look at you, and it's like, yes, indeed. <laughs> now then, and you notice that it looks at the door, and the door closes. It slams shut. And it says, solve the riddle or pay the price. You're a fire. Yep. Fire. Ah. He's he looks a little dejected. He's like <laughs> <laughs> very well. Let them have the key. And you see over in the fireplace, a key is spat out from the fireplace and it goes clink 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 onto the ground. It is also made of silver. Unbelievable. Um, you notice that the, the you didn't really see any one in the fireplace, but it, it seemed to be spat out from the fireplace. Estrov, I think you need a key. Estrov's like, no way. I am not carrying anything. He's like, I am not sure exactly why. I let you guys talk me into this in the first place. I mean, of course, this decanter of endless wine is fantastic, but I would have been quite content to just return to Tavalar and hang out with our twigs. Something to look forward to. And who again is checking out this key? I guess I'll take a look at it again. Okay. You notice that as you go to get the key, the ghost in disinterest is like, ah, well, good luck. And then he floats through the wall and leaves. Remember that I didn't turn you. Um, this one actually is different. Oh, it is? I haven't looked at it yet. Yes, indeed. As you guys look at this key, it's it's still warm from being in the fire. Um, 
it, it seems to be different, perhaps. Lines. You know that there's more stairs that lead up further into the tower. Um, but you also know that at this point you are in a relatively quiet room with at least one functioning bed that has the body of an old dead human in it. Um, what would you like to do? Uh, I think I'm getting pre-tapped on spells, so I would like to rest for the evening. Okay. Um, so are you guys going to stay in this room? Close the door, of course, or leave it closed, rather. Does the door open? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Leave There's no lock on it, but you can but close it. But it closed after the ghost came up. Yes. Um, while there is a functioning kitchen, there's no food of any kind that's been preserved. Um, but you guys could, you know, spread out your bedrolls on the floor. The fire is an actual fire and it provides warmth and uh, comfort. Are there any things, could, I, could Riff investigate, see if there's any things that have locks in the room, chests or any other such things? Yes, you you take your time to investigate and find nothing um, of that type or anything of value. Okay. Um, you're not sure how long the old man has been in this state of possession by the ghost, but it would seem that it's been a while uh, because nothing in the in the in the room would indicate use by anyone who's actually living. Uh, so my last. Uh... My last uh, spell before we rest is going to be to cast ceremony on the body. Uh, effectively give it last rites so it can't rise. It's like a zombie during the night and murder us. Well done. Um, you you do that and you hear a whisper that says, thank you. And you just feel good about yourself. Nice. I'm going to let you have an inspiration point which you can roll over into the next session. And after now we have found five keys and you guys have explored some parts of the tower, we will have to find out what happens on the next episode of D&D with Dads. Thank you as always to all of the patrons for your support, all of the fans for watching. Make sure that you like and subscribe because I probably don't say that enough. And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace out. Happy New Year. Well, hello, and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy, the wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.